Nidri and Craig Miller in the 60s and 70s were tough for the community. The houses were in desperate need of repairs and the residents did their best to carry on. Born to mothers who often had several children and fathers who worked hard, gambled and found solace in the local pubs, we were set loose each day and trusted to be home by tea time. As such, the streets were full of kids playing all sorts of games from football and Kirby to skipping and peevers. I had to ask my mum what that was tonight. <laughs> peevers, yeah, God, I forgot about that. <coughs> there would always be some kids running around pushing each other on guiders, uh, wooden boards set up old pram wheels, as adults stood gabbing in the street or at the entrance to their common stairs. All were within sight of local landmarks like our seat. Craig Muller Castle and the brewery buildings that lent a gritty authenticity to the area. With no central heating and coal being a luxury most people couldn't afford, the whole family would chip in to chop or gather wood. Then with the fire going we'd all squish in to heat our hands and try to avoid the sparks that shot out like flaming rockets. Later my siblings and I would sleep under old coats with our legs in the sleeves huddling together to keep warm in the bitter winters. Flying down steep hills on rickety old bikes without brakes or helmets and climbing trees 40 feet high to find birds' eggs meant the occasional trip to the hospital was inevitable. There was no child-proof lids on medicine bottles and drinking water came only from the nearest tap, inside or outside. On the rare occasions when we would ride in cars, we'd do so with no seatbelts and we survived in a time when chippies were the only takeaways, I remember that. <laughs> and shops stayed closed on the Sabbath. Even the pubs shut early on Sundays. The annual Craig Miller Festival week of celebrations included the fair, originally held outside Craig Miller Castle. It delivered a week of events and happy times for kids and parents alike. The festival moved to the Jack Kane Centre in the 70s. It became more successful every year with people from Nidri, Craig Miller, Green Dykes, Bingham, Magdalene and all over Edinburgh joining in. The yearly New Craig Hall Village Gala event held in New Craig Hall Park along with the Jewel Miners Gala was also a massive part of growing up back then. We frequented the stalls and amusement rides and watched the tug of war and the pipe bands. We ate burgers, stovies, stovies, oh yay, <laughs> uh, stovies, chips, pickled eggs, peas and vinegar and candy floss from the vans parked up to feed the hungry masses. Our houses were mainly two and three storey tenements with either four or six in a block. There were six high-rise blocks of flats in Nidri at this time, two were eventually demolished, but four of them are still standing today. Shops like Peggy Duncan's and Nan Cunningham's, yeah, my mum remembered that one as well, sold affordable clothes, including Peggy Duncan's famous black plimsoll rubbers and baseball boots. Nan Cunningham sold most of the wool to the grannies, mothers and aunties who would knit baby shawls and there were jumpers or tank tops for school. Tank tops. Oh. Only Alan Partridge wears one of them now. <laughs> Coombs news agent on Nidri Mains Drive was where we brought we bought treats such as whoppers, toffee doddles, double lollies, and frozen jubilees. My favourite sweets were called Lucky Tatties. They had a wee plastic toy figure in the middle of a chewy confectionery that pulled many a tooth and would never be allowed today. I don't think that's true, Alex. No, it's just as shite now as it was then. <laughs> <laughs> The women had the county, a.k.a. the gaff bingo, to escape to, while the kids had the venchi, an adventure playground in Nidri Mains Terrace. This is still in use today and has always been a place for kids to have fun over the last four or more decades. The area was very social and the pubs always busy. This was partly due to drink being so cheap. The White House, the Craig Miller Castle Tavern, the University Arms, is it, o is it Omans or Omans? Omans. It, what was it? Omans. 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 Uh, and the Marshall Pub were notorious for fighting. <laughs> there was also the Hearts Club, the Jewel Miners Club, the New Craig Hall Miners Club, plus the Nidri Bowling Club. People like Helen Crummy, Jack Kane, Johnny Stanton, Winnie Black, Muriel Wilkinson, Councillor David Brown, Gavin Strang MP, and many others did their bit to help an area of multiple deprivations. However, in the end, insurmountable problems would take their toll. Nidripreneur is a term I coined, that's great. <laughs> a term I coined for the many people with little or no education who became adept at business and entrepreneurship. Through sheer hard work, ingenuity, and a never-say-die attitude, 
a fair few folk from these areas overcame poverty and other disadvantages to become very successful in their fields. <clears throat> That's proven by the fact that all your books have been nicked <laughs> since we came in. <laughs> it's in the spirit of the evening, you know, they're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> these were tough times, though I often find myself saying that these earlier days were also the happiest of my life. There were many reasons for this. We lived by our wits and we had nothing and no one else to compare our lives to. The area thrived as a community, a community because of how people looked out for one another. To tell the story of my life is to show a number of harsh truths about a society that so many of my generation were brought up in. It was blunt, violent and often cruel but there were people within it who were capable of kindness and warmth, even when they could ill afford to be. And it is to them that I dedicate this book. Robert Kavanaugh, ladies and gentlemen.